Hey everyone, Bethany Wilson here. This is going to be several clips put together of JJ, the Jack Russell Terrier that was in here. He has a lot of reactivity issues towards noise, things that make him aggressive, things that make him nervous, uh, things that just are prey driven. Um, but the thing with him is he amps up easily, uh, which is a bit of an understatement. He's He definitely is, uh, is someone who's easily triggered. So, we have a lot of different protocols for a dog like that, even though we don't come across very many dogs like that. Um, what we use is a, a dominant dog collar, and you can also use a slip leash. Just make sure it stays high on the neck. You can use a Mendota slip leash. It at least has a, a fastener on it um, where you can keep it relatively, relatively high on the neck. And the reason you do that is to diffuse situations if you think you're amping your dog up um, by correcting or if you're trying to redirect with food and you're getting nowhere because of the level of the situation and you're losing control, uh, you can gain it back by having control of the neck. So uh, as soon as we got out of our car, we saw a skateboard. Now, JJ is good with skateboards if we've we've prepped for it. And what I mean by that is the moment we walk out of the house or out of the car, wherever we are, uh, we really take our time and we start working immediately. Perfect heel, a few sits, a few turnarounds, I get him engaged. Um, usually, hopefully, we see a few bikes, which aren't he doesn't really trigger with anymore. So it just helps me gain some momentum, and then we see a skateboard, and then we get to work on the skateboard, and, and he can handle it better. But we saw it the moment um, I pulled up. So I actually pulled down a little bit so I could at least get on the path when he when he saw the skateboard, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to show um, to show him barking and how I use the dominant dog collar if he has an outburst towards anything. Then I've got a few clips of just using the dominant dog collar, no e-collar, and it shows how difficult it is. It shows why why um, with a really high maintenance dog um, that having those multiple tools are really helpful. Um, food, e-collar, dominant dog collar, it's a, it's a lot of stuff, right? But uh, but it's gonna show how they kind of all come together really nicely. Um, and then if you hear any mouth breathing, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that would be from Lizzie, the, the deaf bulldog. Um, all right, guys. Okay, so right now we're coming up on the skateboarder, which was literally right when we got out of the car, so I pretty much knew he would bark because it usually takes him, you know, he has to find a groove and then he'll be good. So there it is. He's jumping up on his own. That is not me lifting him up. Now I'm putting pressure up in the air, but when he goes on his hind legs, that's all him. What, he, what he's doing is he's pushing forward against it. Good. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good boy. He's wondering if he gets food. He absolutely does not get food, and I'll tell you why. This is a huge mistake I think people make even with puppies. Okay, so really short explanation, you know, with puppies or with dogs, doesn't matter, whatever behavioral issue that you're working on, um, to put it in a, in a, just a really clear way, let's say that you have a really excitable golden retriever that's clobbering people when they come in the door. If that golden retriever is able to jump on a person and then you say, no, sit, and then you give them food, you create a pattern of behavior. You create jump, sit, food, jump, sit, food. Um, you're actually rewarding the jumping because all you're doing is redirecting and giving food right away to the same state of mind that that the dog was just in so you're never going to get rid of the jumping um, you might temper it some you might mellow it some and and over the course of many many repetitions you might be able to start asking for the sit before the dog jumps in the first place to gain you a little bit of leverage but you're still just going to struggle it, always it's you know it's just the way it is it's the same thing with bite dogs when when bite dogs are trained they bite then they're then they're outed or told off or told no and then given their toy, um, their tug toy or their ball, you know, whatever their driving force is. It's the same thing. It's the same that cycle. Bite off reward. Bite off reward. Jump, sit, reward. Um, so that can be the same thing when you're working with a fearful dog um, that uh, maybe he hears a truck and he shoots backwards and tries to flee. That's that flight pattern. And then you put food in front of their nose 
and uh, kind of get some eye contact and then you reward that. You're creating a, a cycle of, of behavior which is fearful food and fearful eye contact food. So if you use food or if you use a redirect, it's supposed to be used as a preventative, right? Or to be rewarded for good behavior. So if I pass by a bike or a skateboard and he looks and I say no and he looks up at me, that's that's rewardable. That's what you reward. Um, or if he looks at a bike before he barks or pulls ahead and I do put food in front of his face and then get his attention, that's okay too because it's preventative, right? Um, so that's a really good, it's kind of just a really good distinction you can make. You can get in a really bad cycle of behavior of a dog pulling towards something and, and barking or growling or being fearful, whatever the case is, and then you bring out what they like, you make, you make that association. So you create that, that negative pattern of behavior, which is really, really difficult to get out of. Um, so you always want to use food either preventatively or or to reward good behavior. So let's say that um, your dog barks and you you get them to settle down and you want to reward them. Don't yet. Have them sit. Have them lay down if they know down. Wait a beat. Just hang out. For, oh, yes, I know. I know. She's, she says she wants attention. Um, have them hang out for, for a second. And then, and then maybe tell them break or heal. And my goodness, you're loud. And then uh, do a few turnarounds. Then ask them to sit again. Then give them food. All right. Make sure you give them plenty to do. Isn't that right? Good boy. Good job, buddy. The dog pulling towards us really heavily. Let's just slow down here. So right here, you're kind of going to start to see the beginning of him getting amped up. See, he's still not completely disengaged by that skateboard. Um, and then we've got some bikes coming up too. So me trying to get him to do basic stuff like healing and things like that with pressure will really backfire on you because any tension on the leash only creates more tension. So those are bikes. So that's, see, so see how I prevented the Let's outburst go. there? Now I couldn't with the skateboard one, that was too big, it was too big. But with the bikes, he, cause he was still amped up, he still pulled towards the bikes and there's no correction. So he's like, what's going on? But see how he can't completely disengage? That's where you can use the e-collar and food, which I am gonna show. Just but I just wanted to show Thank how um, he really does continue to stay, um, stay more keyed up but how you use it just to diffuse, but it's not good as a regular training tool um, because, uh, oh, that was nice, buddy. because, uh, and that's the training right there. I mean, all, you know, the, the stopping and sitting and looking at me, you know, that's all the training with the food and the e-collar work, but uh, the more a dog feels tension on the leash, which he's feeling quite a bit here because he's anxious, he's pulling ahead, the more he pulls, the more he's going to pull because there's nothing to snap him out of it, right? There, there's just nothing. It's just pressure back, which, which is what they do to hunting dogs and to sled dogs with harnesses to amp them up. That's why harnesses were created, was to wrap a dog and, uh, and amp them up more. So any pressure oh, yeah, around the neck, around the body, anything like that, the more they pull, the more they're going to pull. Dusty heel. And then of course that triggers a lot of reactivity with, you know, 90% of the dogs we see that's part of, that's a big part of the reason they're reactive is because they've been pulling so much on the walk. Dusty. So, so right there, it's just another example of me, um, before he gets too far ahead of me, um, I'm just going to do, I just use pressure to diffuse him, get that default sit, and then have whatever it is, you know, that he wants to go after go by. Good boy. Normally I'd give him a, a few bits of food uh, for this good Catching behavior to get a little bit more focus, but I was multitasking with the phone, so I hadn't yet. No. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Good job. Catching super early. Man, we got so many barking dogs tonight, no? So I'm at a 40. And I'm using Nick for looking. Nope. 
No? Go, but oh, yeah. No? Good boy! Good job, buddy. We have several going by very quickly. No? Good boy! So I'm tapping. I'm on 40, 42, 40. Good boy. Oh, I know. That was tough. That was tough. So there's a couple going by quickly. Let's go. No? Same thing. Tap there with the nick. Catching stuff early. So I moved to the side and had him sit because it's easier to control looking that way. Um, sometimes... It can just be too difficult to keep walking because they were coming up so fast. Good job, buddy. Another bike. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, I like the glances up at me. Good, good job. See, that's what I want to instill. Sit, buddy. Good job. If I had another hand, I'd give you a goodie. Let's go. Um, that's what I want. I want that engagement. I want when he sees something he normally goes after that he stops and looks at me instead. <laughs> Sometimes dogs will just look away. They won't look at what bothers them when you start to block reactivity. But if he wants to look at me, that's perfectly fine because that tends to be what works because he is such a uh, working drive doggy. It's really interesting see him focusing in again there's a group of people coming up and he just gets excited so when you have a dog heel good boy i scrolled back down to 20. when you have a dog that is used to getting to say hi to who he wants or who makes eye contact with him that kind of thing no if a dog is allowed to say hi to anyone pull towards people that they know or want to say hi to what is stopping that dog from saying no to that person when they want to you're letting them say hi you're letting them act off of excitement when they when they want so if they don't want something or don't like something they will have no problem correcting that human or kid or bike or whatever the case is heel because you've already made a case for them that if they're in a good mood they can do whatever they want they can go say hi they can jump on people so same with dogs if every time your dog sees a dog, they get to greet, dogs are only going to represent excitement. And then if they see a dog they don't like, they usually behave the way they want. So they're going to behave the, the way that they want there as well. So you can't confuse a dog by letting them greet almost everybody until they're in a bad mood and then say no. That makes no sense to them because you've let them do what they've wanted for so long. So that's why even if he looks at people... I don't correct high or anything, but if he like knows, like he starts leaning towards a group of people, especially kids, it's just a no heel. And we continue to move on, or I engage him with food and have him sit and do some obedience if it's uh, a lot to deal with, like kids or something. So we're gonna slow down heel. Got two bikes coming up. We go back up to forty. No. No. No itching. Come on. No. Another bike. Oh, that's a jogger. He doesn't care about that. Sit. So see that stiff posturing? Oh, there we go. No. So it's an in. No. Good. Good boy. Yeah, it's an in for looking. Oh, they've turned around. That's why. All right, come on. That's why I was staring at him. Heel. Nope. Heel. No? Heel. My goodness. So he's kind of pulling ahead because they've gotten, three people have gotten off their bikes. Let's go. And they're hanging out. No? Just want to keep them in check. Heel. Heel. So normally I would play around with um, a few different levels here, but since I'm holding the phone and because I know that uh, sometimes he can get keyed up, see I'm using the leash here. 
So if, if I'm having to correct over and over and over again, it feels like, and if I have or haven't played around with levels, but, but I'm just getting uncomfortable about where his attitude is headed, then I, that's when I can go back to using leash pressure to diffuse him to settle him down. And to be honest, the reason he keeps popping back up here is because I'm really not, um, right here is when he finally gets into to a better spot, uh, because, uh, because I use food, but, uh, but he's still going to stay very engaged, um, on his environment, right? The food doesn't calm him down. It helps me engage with him. So really, I think I use leash pressure like four times in a row, but honestly, if I had just stuck to leash pressure a little bit longer, so I had done the leash pressure even though he was sitting for just a couple seconds longer. It probably would have diffused him um, much better, basically, and I would have had to have kept using it. But anyway, it's a really good tool to use to fall back on whenever you have a dog that's easily triggered, easily keyed up, and um, and it's just it's a nice way to just whoop, calm the brain down. So I'm at a 30. No, go boy, sit. Good job. Good, good boy. No? Good boy. And then that was that. That was them walking by. Let's go. And that's not even with using some yummy food. Good job, bud. Sit. But now I'll have him sit. Now I'll give him a treat. So I'm going to do a few more examples of these as they go by. No? No? Good boy. That was a fast one. So that was a no, no, tap, tap, no. Good. Now, with that being said, he's used to, no, he's, hey, sit. He's used to behaving this way in this area and in um, home area, like neighborhood, as well as the park. Those are all three places we worked heavily on this. Now, he had his first uh, go home session, went really well. I'm really happy with it. There was a lot of dogs, a lot of people. Um, but he, as soon as he was with his family, saw a bike, reacted to the bike. No? With a bark. So I'm going to go up a bit. we got another coming. No? Good boy. Let's go. Loose leash, super important. Got a bike and a dog. No? Good. Dusty, come on, bud. <laughs> Dusty, come on, bud. No. So we got a little grumble there. Probably because we had a few bikes in a row. And uh, and then also a dog going by, right? Good job, bud. All right, another, another bike coming. Now I'm at a 40 this time. I'll tell you why in a second. No. Good boy. So he didn't look at me on that one. No? Good boy. Let's go. Got a lot of barking around me. So the reason I went up to a 40 on that one is because, uh, actually we're going to turn around. Come on, bud. Let's go back. Is because uh, we just saw a skateboard and he did pretty good. So, and it's harder doing the skateboards. They go really fast out here. So it's much more difficult for him. You know, used food, held his attention with food as well as a no for the looking. Um, but whenever that happens... Sit. There he go. <laughs> but whenever that happens, um, uh, he he loads. So I knew that the next thing that we saw, I would need to be a little higher. So those are like little things that we gauge. So now I'm going to go back down to a 30. And stay tuned. All right. So we've got three bikes. Looks like a family coming towards us. And we've seen about a handful and I haven't had to cue him or correct or anything at all, but I got three. <laughs> so let's just see what happens. Good boy. Good boy, yeah. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Good job. So that was three. Really nice, buddy. Sit. Sit. Good job. So I did cue him for the sit. And I'm hanging low. I was only at a 20 because the last several we've seen, I haven't had to do anything with. So it just, I'm just showing this. All right, but let's go. I'm just showing this to show the importance of, uh, of when you do come out firm, how that can affect. Let's go. Go bow with you. How that can really affect the rest of your walk nicely. 
this is another dog he's looking at. Um, and then in instances like the skateboard, where he did really well, but I know it amped him up, I knew the next bicycle that we saw would be difficult for him, so I prep for things like that. Um, so looking for those kinds of cues in your dog, figuring out what works, it just takes time.